All right, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about starting an Amazon FBA business from scratch. So literally all the steps that you need to know in order to start with no knowledge to successfully selling on Amazon and creating your own private label brand. Now this process for me personally, it took about three months to launch and then six months to a year to actually start making real money, like a full-time income. Uh, but if you're able to follow these steps and you're able to aggressively put hours in and research, then this, this process could take only three to six months, right? So I'm gonna break this down to five steps. Um, number one, product research. And this is an order of most important, you know, starting what you need to focus on to, you know, the end game. So number one is product research. I'm gonna be talking about that and just tactics and strategies and how I approach product research when finding products to sell on Amazon. Number two is you need to be able to find a supplier, right? So once you find a product that's selling on Amazon, uh, then you're gonna to need to find a manufacturer. Uh, so that's number two. Number three is branding, which is very, very important. So if people don't trust your product, they don't recognize your brand, doesn't look legitimate, uh, then you're just not gonna get many sales and you're not gonna be as successful. The number four is the product launch itself. So this is you know advertising, uh, all, your, all of your images, keywords, how, how to actually get customers to find you and start making sales. And then number five is listing optimization. So once you're already selling, how to increase conversions, uh, sell more and do a better job at your overall listings on Amazon. All right, so let's get into step one here, which is product research. That is the most crucial part. That's what you're gonna need to be focusing pretty much all of your time on in the beginning. Don't even worry about all the other little nuances. Um, put 90% of your time, I'd say 80 to 90% of your time into product research. So the way I do product research is I use a software tool um, the one I use is called Jungle Scout. Um, it is, I think, a monthly subscription of like 40 or $50, but it's super, super necessary and critical for you to have a tool like this in order to go to Amazon.com. This is basically how you do it. You buy that research tool in a uh, Chrome browser. You, you, it needs to be Google Chrome, otherwise it won't work. And then you are searching for products, whether it's in new releases, by category, uh, you have keyword ideas and then once you're on a page on Amazon then you're gonna pull up that software and it's gonna show you how the numbers look for all of these products that you're looking at on Amazon and what that market looks like so that's the most important part is for product research to make sure there's demand and then make sure that the competition is not that high so I like to look at um, if you're starting a brand, definitely look by how much potential the market has. So not just looking at one product, but can you launch two, three, four, five products down the line uh, that all complement each other, are in the same niche, and can just build an overall brand and get cross sales and um, you know have multiple products to offer so that you're not just um, launching one product and then if that product goes under gets bad reviews then you're in trouble but it's a good way to di differentiate by having like three to five products that you can potentially launch uh, so that's definitely what I'd be looking for and then in terms of the exact you know data for what a good product is to sell on Amazon you know there are a bunch of different ways to go about this you can sell really high priced products only a few a month with a higher profit margin or you could sell really low priced products but sell a lot of them per month or just uh, sell a bunch of different products um, but what I like to do and what's worked for me personally is looking for products that have on average 300 sales per month so this is where the software tool comes in you absolutely need that in order to be able to see that uh, so about 300 sales a month which is basically 10 sales a day and then the products need to have less than 100 reviews and that's a way we look at competition right now let's actually go on a slideshow so you can see that better um, so about 300 sales a day which means good demand uh, excuse me 300 sales a month and then less than 100 reviews uh, for those products so good demand and medium to low competi competition also we're gonna look at a price a final sale price on Amazon of about 15 to 25 dollars 
that like fifteen dollars is pretty much the lowest I would ever go because anything lower than that, uh, Amazon fees are gonna really start adding up, and you won't be able to make much profit. And then um, higher price products usually cost more to source, so it's gonna cost you a lot more to um, you know sell a hundred dollar item in terms of what it actually costs you to manufacture and ship. Uh, so that's why that fifteen to twenty five dollar range I think is good to look at because it's uh, you'll be able to make a decent amount of profit and it won't cost you a whole lot of money to start. All right, so once you get that, you find those numbers, a product that has those kind of sales data, then uh, find a brand on Amazon that's in this market and then basically model after, after it. So basically you find the product, a product that you wanna sell, you look at what that seller is also selling and you see if he's selling you know, three or five other different products in the same niche and then you basically model after what they're doing. So you look at their packaging, you look at their keywords, you look at the other products that they're selling to give you ideas. So the best way to go about that is basically by modeling after what other people are already doing on Amazon and then put your own spin on it, do a better job of branding, um, get a more premium product by doing better uh, product research and reaching out to suppliers, which is the next part, so that you overall are a strong competitor in the market. Uh, and then what I would do is launch multiple products now. Obviously, if you don't have that much money to start, launching one product is great, but you need to be able to have a future plan for launching multiple more down the line. So not just having one product and that's it, but then maybe two months from then, once you start making sales, making profit, uh, put that money back into your business and launch another product so that you can continually build out that product line, differentiate, um, increase your revenue, and then also uh, have less more stability. So if one product goes down, you have multiple others that are still up and running. All right, so suppliers. So once you find the product, once you find the market, and you've done your research, you know it's selling, you know it has good demand, medium competition, multiple different products in that market that you can go after, then you're gonna to need to reach out to suppliers. And the way I do this is through Alibaba. Now, mostly it's like kind of the Chinese wholesale Amazon. Uh, so you go to alibaba.com and you type in whatever product you're looking for, and then it'll bring a list of suppliers. And what I like to do is um, contact 20 at a time. That's the most you can contact at a time. Um, for each product that you're selling or you wanna sell and then ask them a bunch of questions, right? I have a template for this, but basically what I ask is, you know, hey, my name is Michael Soltis. I work for an e-commerce company in the United States selling products on Amazon. Can you give me a quote for this product, right? And then ask basically bullet points one through 10 kind of thing, like what's the price per unit? Uh, what's the price for shipping? Can you do like this modification? Uh, can you print a barcode label on the product? Can you do customized packaging and logo design? Uh, can you ship it um, to my location in the United States? How much does this cost? Do you have um, experience with this? So basically just vetting the supplier and then the ones that respond quickly, the ones that give you good information and good price are the ones you talk to. The ones who respond two weeks later and say, hi, yes, we can offer this product you're not gonna to wanna to talk to them because they're not professional, all right? And then after you find those suppliers that are actually um, working with you, have a good price and all of that, then you're gonna to wanna to negotiate the pricing pretty aggressively. Before, I would just take whatever first price they offered me and be like, uh, okay, check the numbers. Yes, I can make profit on this. Okay, let's do it. But now I like to actually push a little bit. So obviously the first price they're giving you is not gonna be the lowest price or the best price. So the way you get your pricing uh, better and lower for the cost of goods when you're sourcing from China is to say a target price. So basically say you want to manufacture this cup, for example, and they're charging you $2 per unit. You'd be like, no, um, my target price is 50 cents per unit. And that really gives them an actual number to, you know, work with and talk about rather than just saying, okay, yeah, that works for me. Um, so that's one way to say a target price uh, um, that you want where you can really drastically under, under uh, quote what they're um, basically a number they're giving you. So it's not just, okay, this works. Um, 
another thing is to use invoices against multiple suppliers. That's why I, I talk about reaching out to a bunch of different suppliers. So if one says, oh, well, we can do that for 25 cents, and the other one says they can do it for uh, $2, then you send that invoice and you say, look, this supplier is saying they can offer 25 cents per unit. Can you compete with that? And you actually give them you know, kind of the company name and a screenshot of what it actually is or the PDF document. It's called a pro forma invoice, basically showing uh, what the company is quoting you. And then that way, they will um, kind of freak out and then also try and offer you a good price. So competition is good. You can use that against the other factories by um, sending them each other's invoices. All right, and then once you find that, you have a price, you found the suppliers that are gonna work with you, then you can communicate over WhatsApp or uh, the Chinese like WeChat, but I usually use WhatsApp. It's just instant messaging rather than talking on Alibaba or email, which takes forever. Um, WhatsApp is just a lot quicker and you can go back and forth, back and forth, getting out all these details so you can communicate as quick as possible and launch a product as quick as possible. And then I would highly recommend using Alibaba Trade Assurance, right? Um, so that's kind of like a, um, a way of protecting yourself. So Alibaba holds the money, right, between you and your supplier. Once you pay your supplier, basically you're paying through Alibaba. And then your supplier has to actually finish the manufacturing um, before they actually receive the money. So if they don't deliver, then you'll get your money back. That's why Alibaba Trade Assurance is uh, definitely something I would recommend. So it's a more protective way of making sure you don't get screwed over. And then the first order, I would suggest using uh, DDP Air Shipping. Um, that means delivery duties paid. So basically, uh, the supplier will do everything for you, manufacturing, uh, all the customizations, and then shipping it to the Amazon warehouse, and you're completely hands off. It's just the quickest, most effective, uh, easiest method of getting something manufactured and shipped to an Amazon warehouse. And then after that, maybe after your first order, then you can think about moving to sea shipping, which is usually way cheaper, maybe like 25% of the cost of air shipping. Uh, that could be an option and then branding right so you have the product you found whatever products you want to sell then you have the suppliers that can manufacture those products for you at a good price now you're really going to want to think about branding and then also the suppliers are going to ask you for you know your customized logo your um, UPC code right which is like the barcode that you need to have for Amazon um, and then so in order to do branding, I don't know about you, but I'm not the greatest graphic designer. You know, I can use Photoshop a little bit. I can use um, other graphic design tools a little bit, but not as great as someone who I could hire professionally online. So go to a website like Fiverr or Upwork and um, look for graphic designers who can create, you know, packaging and branding. And this is literally what I did. I took a piece of paper. I took um, a pencil and I literally took crayons and I drew out an idea of what I want my packaging to look like. And then I took a picture of that and then I sent that to um, the d designers online, uh, like on Fiverr or whatever. And I asked them, hey, I like this is a rough sketch of what I want this product packaging to look like. Can you design something on Photoshop for me? It took like $10 and two days for them to come up with something you know, 50 times better than I could have done. Uh, so that is basically how you go about that. Just come up with uh, a brand name and then a logo. L literally take a notepad, force yourself over, you know, a day or two or a couple of hours, you know, to take a notepad, open it up, write down brand name ideas, just start jotting something down that whatever comes to mind, um, and then just go with it and kind of come up with a logo idea or ask your, a graphic designer to come up with a logo and then if you don't like it you spent ten dollars what's the big deal um, so you could just find someone else or do it again but I know people who get caught up on that part where it takes them weeks and weeks and weeks or they never get around to actually creating a brand name and logo but literally just 
pick something and go with it basically and usually it'll turn out pretty well if you can use the graphic designer for that all right so besides for that um, you're gonna look at want to look at the competition as well so what other uh, competitors on Amazon are already doing so their branding their packaging uh, how their logos are designed one way to do that is literally to order their product get it to your house look at it and then see if you can come up with ideas for that and just kind of model after it, improve it, do something different, something that stands out. Um, also, you could go into actual physical stores, right? Like a Target, Walmart, anything like that, and then look at the packaging on literally anything and come up with ideas just so you're kind of thinking about it. Um, and then basically just hire someone on Fiverr or Upwork or whatever online, whatever website you want to use for $10, $20. You don't, don't need to spend $200, $500 on a uh, you know graphic designer. It's not really worth it. Basically, you just get someone to pay, you know, pay someone pretty cheap for an idea and a rough sketch and um, move on to the next thing, which is the product launch, right? So you have found a product, you have talked to suppliers, gotten a price that works with you, you got the branding done, um, so everything checks out. You probably already put the deposit down. Usually the payment terms for your supplier is 30% deposit, then a 70% um, remaining balance for when you actually manufacture something to when you pay for all of it. So you want to kind of limit your risk and using Alibaba Trade Assurance and then also splitting up the payment terms is a great way to start with as little money down as possible and then to you know get the ball rolling as quick as possible but the product launch itself so that's assuming you already got it into Amazon uh, I'm not gonna go into detail on how the shipping process works and stuff I have other videos on that and uh, you can do your own research on actually getting the product into Amazon all the technical parts of that but um, like personally I would launch multiple products at the same time but maybe if you don't have the money to launching one is great it's a good start You'll kind of get your feet wet and figure out the process. Um, but what you do is as soon as you have product in the inventory in warehouse at Amazon, you get an email from Amazon says, you know, your, your shipment is processing and we're counting all your units or whatever. Then I would start with PPC, which is pay per click. It's Amazon's advertising platform that you directly uh, advertise on Amazon. And I would launch an automatic campaign, basically meaning, you know, once you set up your listing, you have your title, your keywords, um, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and then your images, which are extremely important. Then you just create an automatic campaign. You pretty much click three buttons and it takes 30 seconds and you're advertising on Amazon. Amazon will basically advertise for whatever keywords that um, customers are searching for. And if your product is relevant, they'll send it and show it for you. So I usually bid very aggressively. Um, I bid like one or two dollars per click. So a customer clicks on your product when they type in a keyword that's related to it, and then you get charged that amount, and then about a fifty dollar budget per day. Now it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be spending that much money, but I like to start and go aggressive right out the gate as soon as possible just to get those that sale velocity up. Um, and then after a week or two, check back with your campaigns, see what keywords are working, uh, which ones are converting and not, and then adjust that from there. Okay, so listing optimization. So you have your product in Amazon, you're already advertising, everything's up and running. Really, this is where you can pretty much take a breather. So it's up, it's in there. You know, when someone orders it on Amazon.com, it comes out of a warehouse, someone picks it, packs it, and ships it, you literally do nothing. That's why it's called passive income. It's all up front where you set it up, create it, find the product, and then send it into Amazon and they take care of the rest. But if you want to increase your sales, um, increase conversions, um, stuff like that, then a few things you can do. Number one is the title. So you want to stuff as many good keywords in there as possible that are related to the product. Uh, and then number two is the images. So you know the main image, you want to have a clear, high definition, uh, like 2000 by 2000 pixel um, image for zoomability. 
and then it needs to be on a pure white background. So I would suggest having the product, what it actually is, and then also displaying the packaging because technically that's part of the product. So it's not against Amazon's terms of service. So you're showing the product and the packaging. And usually if you have really good packaging, it's premium, it looks good, um, it's colorful, it catches attention, then that's a really good way to stand out because everyone sees your main image and that will help you get sales. So I would also definitely suggest a couple of lifestyle images, right? Meaning you have the product, you send it to a photographer, find someone online, and uh, they hire a model to actually use your product and they'll take pim like pictures of the model, you know, using your product in real life, which really boosts conversions. So when people can see your product in use, then they can really start kind of using their imagination and kind of get an emotional attachment to the product, which helps with sales. Um, so that's very, very, very important. And then also infographics, basically, um, you know, displaying all the key uh, benefits and features. So like showing what your product can be used for, um, mainly uh, pushing the customers away from pain, right? So whatever your product, the pain that it solves, and then towards pleasure. So whatever your product does, how it can make them happier or their life easier, simpler, or more time effective or something like that. So that's something to have in your listing, in your images. And then also like a comparison photo, right? So if you have like uh, towels, for example, uh, you can compare your towels. Maybe they're thicker, they're softer, they're more durable to like a competitor's uh, set of towels that are like thinner, they fall apart, they're not as soft. And then you can show that comparison to where it shows and makes the, your value stand out more than you know the competitors. So that's a good way to actually visualize why your product is good and then also obviously model after what the competitors are doing so look at their product their their images their listing and then see what they're advertising and how they're going about that and then just uh, improve on it never copy what they do but always use it as a model because it's obviously already working if they're making sales and then improve that um, so like a title obviously very important at least 100 characters, right? So each letter is a character, I think including spaces. Um, so have enough descriptive title, but not going over the top with, you know, using the same keyword 10 times in the title. It's kind of useless, right? Because you're selling to people, not robots. Uh, and then also bullet points, right? You can have five bullet points. I would keep them short, like 70 characters each. So basically one short line giving descriptive, um, descriptions of what the product's used for, uh, key features, benefits, things like that. All right, and then once you're launched, right? So you've gone through the entire process, um, created a brand, found a product, got the suppliers, uh, launched it on Amazon and optimized it. Now you're just gonna kind of tweak things. So you're going to basically adjust your advertising, add more keywords, uh, increase the bid up and down. Basically, you're gonna be managing, right? So making sure you don't run out of stock, thinking about more products that you can launch. I try and launch one a month. You can launch one every you know, three, four months, whatever, just to kind of keep on adding more products to your line and to uh, differentiate. And then also optimizing the listing, maybe you know, reaching out to a, a photographer again, saying, hey, um, like doing a better job on images and lifestyle and stuff like that to help boost conversions and sales. Then also talking to suppliers. So not just talking to your same suppliers, but looking for more and then negotiating with them. So I know that was a lot of information, um, kind of like drinking from a fire hose, but basically that's the whole idea, right? So that five step process of doing product research, very, very important. The most important part, in my opinion, uh, finding a supplier. Once you have done your pro, you know your product research, then branding, uh, product launch, and then listing optimization. Uh, so that's basically the whole process of starting on Amazon. Uh, took me, I think, two months of product research, and then an entire month of sourcing and getting the product in. So literally three months from not even knowing you could sell on Amazon to launching a product and uh, my first month I made like $1,800 in profit. Um, 
So that's basically the whole process. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.